So I was about to leave my house, but I looked out the window and I saw this. So there's all the chemtrails full of um, radio wave charge. Oh, look at that cloud. See the wave patterns in it? The lines? And here's another plane adding more metals to the concoction to make sure that they can continue to uh, either charge up and heat that pocket of atmosphere or to uh, withdraw the the energy and cool you can do it anyway you have a wire running a current you can transfer that current in either direction if you control both stations or both ends of the conductor if you want to look up how they transmit the signal there <laughs> i mean see look at these wave patterns right wave pattern i don't know why people just don't understand how basic this is right wave pattern not natural wave pattern waves let's zoom in on that see clouds do not repeat in a systematic performance like that there's a pattern causing that the pattern is the frequency of the electric charge that is being run through the sky because this guy over here is he's poisoning the environment and our earth because he's aerosoling metals barium strontium aluminum okay it's basic you spray these metal aerosols into the atmosphere and you run a charge through them why because metals conductive and it's a high frequency charge because you need high voltage to overcome the resistance if you're wondering how it works it's volts equals current times resistance and that's a, a triangle relationship uh, if you want to find the current you divide the volts by the resistance if you want to find the resistance you divide the volts by the current basic algebra and that's like year one electrical trade school that I took damn a long time ago now <laughs> like almost 20 years anyways yeah there you go look at all those bleeping chemicals poisoning our sky why because the false narrative fictional narrative of global warming which obviously there's not a globe as well as it's not warming up because they're reflecting the Sun back out with this it's called solar remediation it's one of the terms they use solar remediation geoengineering look it up Harvard and Oxford have entire programs on this so why am I making a video about geoengineering because people will mention things like chemtrails flat earth or gravity being a myth and because it doesn't seem like a single day can go by without ridiculous geoengineering above me <laughs> And right outside my living room. Most people respond with their programmed reaction of, oh, it's conspiracy theory. But it's not. It's conspiracy fact. And geoengineering is the most obvious and easiest of all conspiracies to witness and wake up to on your own time, wherever you are in the world. Because it's everywhere. Quite literally. And it's been around for decades. In fact, the first experimentation into chemtrailing goes back to the late 50s. Prior to that, there was cloud seeding experimentation that occurred with Project Sirius and Project Storm Fury, which we'll get into here with some clips from a video produced by the Discovery Channel along with the BBC. control the weather has a weapon as powerful as any Air Force. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. military began seeding clouds along the Ho Chi Minh Trail to create floods and wash out North Vietnamese supply routes. It was known as Operation Popeye, and crews flew over 2,000 spray missions. Using aircraft with spray mechanisms to dispense chemical compounds into the sky, weather can be suppressed or intensified over a limited area for a period of time. Dr. Joseph Golden is a weather modification pioneer. He's been studying weather for the U.S. government for over 40 years. The earliest uh, that I was involved in weather modification research in the United States was with Project Storm Fury, which has a history dating back to the 1960s. The goal of the, of the Storm Fury experiments was to, again, to weaken the hurricane by as much as 10 to 15 percent. Project Storm Fury experimented with a process known as cloud seeding. Aircraft would fly into the eye of hurricanes and spray silver iodide. In theory, the chemical compound would bond with the supercooled moisture in the hurricane and cause it to freeze. A number of complex changes to the eye wall were supposed to take place, 
and weaken the hurricane's destructive speed and power. Eventually, the project failed as costs escalated into the millions of dollars without demonstrating conclusive results. But as technologies advanced, cloud seeding was put to other uses. Terry Krause is a meteorologist and project manager for North Dakota-based Weather Modification Incorporated. The company owns a large fleet of aircraft and conducts cloud seeding projects in more than a dozen countries around the world. A lot of people don't uh, realize that California has been conducting wintertime cloud seeding uh, for uh, almost 50 years. As you can see it for yourself and understand that it is fact, and not fiction or theory, then you'll realize that all the other ones are just as credible. And the only difference is you have to do the research for yourself and find out exactly what it is and why it's happening. So what we're about to watch here is a CBC program from 1996 exposing HARP in its initial stages when it was being built in Alaska and they started the construction in 1993. Jean Manning is a journalist who stumbled into a strange world when she started asking questions. About a month ago, the U.S. Patent Office granted a patent to a Houston-based scientist, Dr. Bernard Eastland, for an invention which, Dr. Eastland says, could be used to change the weather. The Eastland patents talked about particle beam weaponry, something called a death ray, and he said, the maniacs are actually going to do it. They were conspiring to build Bernard Eastland's Sky Zapper under the guise of a nice little research project deep in the Alaskan bush called HARP. Basic concept is to build a very large antenna, then to utilize a large amount of uh, power and uh, to beam those radio waves up into the upper atmosphere. Have you approached the Pentagon with this invention? Yes, and what I'm not at liberty to tell you is the details of what that interaction has been. HARP is a non-classified project run not by Bernard Eastland, but by the U.S. Army and Navy. The official HARP story is told by one man, John Heckscher. It consists of several types of transmitting instruments. The ionosphere is a sea of electrically charged particles in the upper atmosphere, and the instrument is a powerful radio wave transmitter. Jim Roderick isn't buying it. He's been gunning for the real goods on HARP, and his weapon is the internet. The military isn't capable of doing pure science. Science is conducted by them for application in weapon systems for no other reason. They've dredged up hundreds of long buried scientific reports and even some internal documents from the military. I hate to disagree with you, but uh, uh, it's not his patent that we're building. Superficially, yes. There is a paper trail leading no. us back to Eastland. No, there is not. You must be familiar with technical memorandum 195? Uh, I'm not familiar with that number. Superficially, yes. There is no uh, paper trail that I'm aware of that's leading back to Eastland. Superficially, yes. Eastland used to be an employee of the company which is building HARP, but that's pure coincidence. Superficially, yes. The tiny company that owned Eastland's patents was later swallowed up by an enormous military intelligence firm called eSystems. 2.1 billion in annual sales, 1.8 billion of that, with a B, was to a military intelligence groups, CIA, NSA, um, and others, and of, of that, 800 million were, were black projects, so, so secret that even the United States Congress didn't know what they were. Superficially, yes. E-Systems was then swallowed up by Raytheon Corporation. It, too, specializes in super-secret contracts with the Pentagon. So how would you describe this world of E-Systems and Raytheon and HARP? DARP, for them, represents potentially billions and billions of dollars. Michelle Angbretson you know keeps the HARP computers from freezing up in between visits from the military scientists. Well, do you know, I mean, do you understand what they're, what they're doing here well, when the scientists the, come in? You mean when the scientists come in and shoot the beams up? Yeah, they're uh, shooting the beams up and I think that heats a little small space in the ionosphere and then uh, you've got guys that are sitting on computers and you've got uh, people putting up weather poles that measure weather and everything like that. There have been claims made by some scientists that you could heat up the ionosphere and affect local weather. 
Uh, if you were to do Eastland patents, I have no doubt that's the case. Superficially, yes. No, so you're wrong. Not harp. Not not harp in As it is Alaska. Now. No. Superficially, yes. If if the systems used a path which was accessible to the harp beam, yes. Starting to sound like Eastland's invention to you and engineer the weather. Caught this plane spraying. There it is. It's probably too far away by now. Yeah, it's as close as I'm getting. However, yeah, look at that spray. That's a long ways away. I can barely even see that with my natural eyes. Uh, but, thank God for the P900. This is the earlier part of his trail. And I caught him at about that point. And then just time to set up my camera. He's already gone. But you can keep seeing the trail go. Because that is not condensation. That is chemicals. Let's just zoom in on this because it's doing what I said it would do. Uh, you zoom in, you can see the striations in the cloud as it's separating and forming those wave patterns. Uh, let's zoom out a little. There we go. That's probably a better view. It's pretty bright and sunny out, so it's hard to see. Uh, but these are the two uh, chemtrails that I was talking about and recording earlier. Anyways, uh, just gonna continue time lapse on them as they pass on south. And engineer the weather. I just wanted to take a moment to point out, since we have an example of both chemtrails in the sky, as well as natural cloud formations. So let's zoom in and you'll see these are natural clouds, right? They're fluffy, circular in nature, or sort of globular. Uh, and then chemtrails have this linear pattern to them uh, and do appear in waves. And you can tell that it's not the same substance, it's not H2O because it doesn't form or doesn't behave, doesn't move the same way uh, as water and clouds do. And so now here you see this, this is a mixture where it's sort of chemtrails and clouds. And you can see the wave patterns here and the different uh, effects of running a current through the aerosols that they've dispersed into the atmosphere. Just an example of what is not a cloud and what is sort of a cloud. Here you go. Here you go. There's a cloud not surrounded by chemtrails. That's a cloud. There's a couple more but then there's more chemtrails. Just bear in witness. And engineer the weather. Yes. I watched a, a video by Matt Landman, who's a track a rap song by a guy called Homage. And the chorus line was digital skies, was the phrase at least. And that is a perfect explanation. Uh, sorry, just woke up and saw this shit. There's a fresh mud right over there. Let's zoom in. Right there is a fresh one. <sighs> and harps running. First thing in the morning. And the production of artificial weather all are part of an integrated set of military technology. They're spraying chemicals in nanoparticle form. The government is using harp to be starting a storm. The water shortage is a topic they're complaining about. But they don't even want to stop it. They're creating the drought. Planes now make clouds when they spray out shit. You can see it because it happens every day now, kid. You can read the patents and see what they say about this. They make town sick. It ain't safe to stay around this. If they didn't mean to leave a trail that scatters in the sky, why am I seeing geometric patterns from the line? You're blind to the facts and afraid of the truth. Your mind's trapped by the lies that they say in the news. Planes spew poison now starting barely at dawn. Cause they treat us like rats that they experiment on. Anybody would agree that it clearly is wrong. I hope you do something about it after hearing this song. I see airplanes spraying shit on my town. Television being used for conditioning now. No one even speaks about it like it isn't allowed. The sky's made of white snakes and digital clouds. I see airplanes spraying shit on my town. Television being used for conditioning now. No one even speaks about it like it isn't allowed. The sky's made of white snakes and digital clouds. The weather's controlled. It's part of a malevolent goal. But the God is all believing in whatever we're told. I just wanted to take a quick recording of the sky right now because... This is the first time in weeks that I've seen a sky of natural clouds with no 
latent geoengineering chemtrailing going on. Because a lot of times I'm saying these are not natural, these are not real. And I have nothing to compare by because we're being sprayed so frequently. But today is one of those rare, rare days where you actually get to see what real clouds are like. Look at it. Real clouds. A real sunny, partially cloudy day in Edmonton. And it's sad that I have to be excited over that. So this is an example of chemtrails mixed with natural clouds. Just got to work and just had to show this sucker off. Look at that. Big old streaks. I'm at an advantage point here out in the West End. Uh, so I get to see this stuff as they drop it first thing in the morning. But look at that. One big streak right across the sky. Right above my head. And look at all the wavelengths. All that current traveling through it and then you come up here and you can actually see uh, what would be considered a sun dog which is effectively a rainbow and it's being caused by the chemical sky so you can see there's lines there's striations there's a pattern you can even see a giant sine wave right top or bottom or bottom and top of the uh, peaks and yeah look at it look at it just streak in there we are getting poisoned hardcore. Wake up. I've seen these videos of, of these kinds of cloud, uh, well, they're not cloud, these are geoengineered formations. But notice how it's a giant wall in almost linear fashion. Uh, so yeah, once again, witnessing more like phenomenal. And if you look over here and zoom in, you can see, it's the most standard uh, linear wave patterns occurring. It isn't just truthers who are concerned about HARP. In January of 1999, the European Union called the project of global concern and passed a resolution calling for more information on its health and environmental risks. Weather's controlled, it's part of a malevolent goal, but they got us all believing in whatever we're told. 